Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be putting my spin on some of the weirdest things I've seen in my tennis life. So, stay tuned. Alright guys, so some of the stranger things that I've seen in my tennis career. Like, and I've seen a lot of them. Um, I'd actually like to start before I get into rackets is actually what I'm wearing. So this is something that Nike made, I want to say six to seven, maybe a little eight years ago. And it was specifically made for tennis, as you can see. T-N-N-S, okay? However, they want to spell that to equal tennis. But um, so when I'm walking, when I'm walking on the street wearing this thing, right? Right. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see this? All right. This is how. So I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to put balls back here in the pouch and go like this and hit. Right. So I put my excess balls in the back like this. Okay, and there's a, obviously the Nike symbol here, Nike symbol back there. So, am I coming, or am I going, or am I going, or am I coming? Okay, you wouldn't believe how many people, you know, when I'm wearing this down the street or whatever, they go, "Dude, you got your shirt backwards," and I'm like, the first time I was like. No, it's how it's supposed to be. People are like, okay, okay. But after the hundredth time, you know, it's like, I go, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm wearing it backwards. Okay, I kind of just give up. Okay, so I get what they're trying to do, but it's kind of coming and going. You know, we don't really know. Or, I mean, I put my shirt on backwards a lot, as you can ask my wife and inside out and all that stuff too. But to do this on purpose, you know, and to kind of, you know, throw everything off in whatever. Okay. So I just want to start by talking about the garment. That's a little, not awkward, but a little strange. I mean, somebody's thinking a little too much over at Nike. You know what I mean? All right. So let's start in on the rackets here. Actually, yeah, this is, uh, I'm going to take a quick coffee break. Okay. Um, actually, somebody asked me yesterday, what exactly is buy me a coffee? So it's actually a network. So you go to www.buymeacoffee.com, look for tennis spin, and then you do, it's kind of like a donation thing. So go to that website, look for tennis spin. You can, Donate to my coffee cause there. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for those who already um, donated. Oh, shout out to Stephen Barry, uh, who bought me a good amount of coffees. Uh, congratulations on your retirement. Steve Barry has actually been with us, uh, the, st the store, for like since the beginning. So it's been, man, man, Steve, you've been with me for 16 years. I'm glad you're retired, you're married, and you're happy. All right. Don't let Drew, don't let Drew pull you out of retirement. All right. This one's for you, Steve. Okay. All right. So let's start it on the rackets, but I'm going to get out of this thing right now because I'm not that comfortable wearing crap backwards anymore. All right. So I got out of that sweater into my wear the Fila shirt, guys. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. Me too. That's why I got this shirt. But it's supposed to be wear the fila. Not, you know. Okay? All right. So, speaking of uh, WTF stuff, um, we'll start with what everybody kind of understands and knows because it's still kind of in line. Big Bubba by Gamma. So, what were they thinking when they made this? Obviously, bigger is better. Bigger is badder. Right, you can be a badass with this one. You could be a bad mamma jamma with this one. You know, it's 29 inches, the longest you can legally have, 137 square inches, the biggest you can legally 
have, but it's actually only 9.9 .9 ounces, unstrung. Isn't that crazy? Even though it feels like it's a lot heavier than that because of the length, all the weight is going to be out here. The two extra inches out here makes all this feel heavier. You don't need to swing hard. You don't need to swing hard. Just let the racket do its job. Okay, so what were they thinking? Power. A lot of power. Okay, so this is kind of like the modern day, what were they thinking racket? You know? So going back in time a little bit, like Prince with this mono, they were actually trying to turn back time. Like Jimmy Connors time. Connors was about to retire and they were trying to resurrect him with this racket. Right? With a single shaft racket. Yeah, I didn't understand what they were trying to do. Like, wooden rackets were pretty much done by then, but they were trying to make a graphite wooden racket. So, and this was the first iteration of it. Um, what really this did was make this thing flex and flex a lot. But we were kind of in the long era by now. So they were making longer rackets, still bigger rackets in this time frame. And I'm talking about 25, 30 years ago. Um, and it, it's, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't sell too many. I'm glad to get this one from my buddy, Michael Lynn. And uh, just to kind of bring me back to a certain uh, racket time frame. Uh, but flex was supposed to be it in the time of long right and you just got out of the time of wide body so you went from wide body to long to going back in time with a single shaft to wooden days that didn't make a whole lot of sense so another what were they thinking okay thinking way out of the box here like way out of the box here so these Blackburns, I remember, so this is a double face racket. I remember when I walked into a sharper image, I'm going to show you a cross section of that. We did a play test on this. I'll link that to the, uh, the bottom here. So it's strung on both sides. So you literally have to string two rackets in one with this one. You can see that the grommets are right at the edge of the frame on both sides. You can see one on this side and then the other on this side. Now, what is this supposed to do? It's supposed to give you a frying pan, you know, you or, or make a waffle. You know, you flip the thing, you, know, you flip the thing. Anyways, it's supposed to actually make the sweet spot go all the way out to the edges because you don't have frame in there and you really can't. I guess you can frame it, but it'll hopefully give you a good ball back. But it's supposed to elongate the sweet spot, right? And I remember when I first saw this thing, it was at Sharper Image. You guys remember that store? It was at Sharper Image at Girardelli Square. And they had this mid-plus version and the oversized version. And it was literally $400. And I was like, okay, cool. But, I mean, you guys know... Sharper image as the overpriced technology, convenience, you know, self luxury, self indulgent store, anyways, right? So, why not indulge in the most expensive racket on the market, right? The Blackburn. I think it was called Blackburn back then, but it, it, it was the first time ever I saw um, a racket like this and the first time anybody has attempted to make a racket like this. Uh, we've tested it. It actually isn't bad for what it is. It's just, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. Okay. All right. And the most strange racket I've ever seen. This is part of my buddy Peter Allen's collection. It's Ber Bergeline, Bergelin. I'm not sure how to say that. B E R G E L I N. And it's called Long String 2. So he actually, when he gave me this racket, he gave me the uh, printout um, on how to string it too. So 
what was the whole premise behind this racket? Well, the way that it's like not round, you know, with the lines coming down like this, obviously was for one stiffness, right? Makes it more stable according to them, right? Look and see how it comes through. What this is a stabilizer bar. This is kind of what they call the yoke, the bottom bar of the racket here, but it comes through there. Now, why is it strung this way, cross section like this versus straight like that? You're not supposed to ever break a string with this. Think about it this way. If, if you hit it this way or this way, strings aren't going to be moving. You can't break a string. It's not meant to be broken because the strings aren't going to really move. So let's take a look at the numbers here on the side. That's basically a guide map to show you how to string this. I don't know when this racket came out, but I'm guessing it's going to be in the 80s, if not the early 90s, for them to come up with something like this. And it's a McGregor racket. See the McGregor name there. That's a stabilizer bar. So, so the numbers, you have to string it a certain way. Um, I don't know where number one is, but number two is right over here. And then you go to three, which is up there. And then you kind of have to find four. It's a pain to string this thing. I haven't tried it, nor do I really want to. So let's take a look at the sides here. See all the strings that it's going to gobble up and, and how it all runs how it all runs down, runs down to where? Where does it all run down to on both sides? Where does it run down to? It runs down to that thing. So here's the premise. After you string it, after you string it, it's all through here. You get a wrench and you tighten it, you tighten it, and the strings get tightened. So you never have to cut the strings out and get a restring. That's kind of genius, isn't it? Kind of mad scientist genius. Because if this is too loose, I'm just going to get a wrench. I'm just going to tighten it up. Strings will never break because they're not in the right angle to break. Right? That's, I mean, that's brilliant. Somebody was actually, you know, thinking out there when it came to this racket it's just i don't think anybody wanted to string it and it looked kind of weird obviously it doesn't look like a normal tennis racket but there's definitely some kind of you know something behind it all right so that's the mcgregor burr burgeline burgeline long string two um, I'm actually going to take this out and try to play with it and uh, get some specs on this one in the near future. Uh, but strangest, maybe the most genius racket of all time. All right. So, guys, what do you think? Big Mamma Jamma? Not sure why. I get it but we want to just take your money. Crazy mad scientists. And what the freak? No, where your fila? Where the fila? Look, it even says right here, where the fila? All right, taking us out today. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Daryl Chow and I'm from Eugene, Oregon. All right, take me out, Daryl. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.